Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am here to talk about all of the fragrances that I wore last week. So I've got quite a few here. I'm gonna jump right in. So I'm gonna start with Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. This is such a perfect, it's just a perfect scent any time of year. You can wear this literally all year round. Um, I love this as a transitional scent though going into fall because it is perfect for those fall days that are starting out cool and ending cool but getting really hot in the middle of the day. That's how it was the day that I wore this and it was just perfection. I love this scent. There's something so nostalgic smelling about this and there are people that have been able to put their finger on what it is and they say that it smells like certain things from the 80s, like certain shampoos and things, but I'm not familiar with those products, so that's not it for me. I still, I just still cannot put my finger on it, but it smells like something from my childhood. Um, I just love this fragrance so much. I think I got about five or six hours out of it or so. Usually I do better. Usually this is a very, very long lasting fragrance on me. I don't know, I don't know if it was because it got really pretty warm that day or um, I don't know. I don't know why it didn't last longer than that, but even five or six hours I'm totally fine with. That is plenty of time. Um, but yeah, it didn't, it wasn't as long lasting on me as it normally is, but Anyways, I didn't mind. I just love this scent so much. This is like a, it's a honey and sweet white floral fragrance and it's beautiful. I love it. It's one of my favorite celebrity scents on the market and it just, it makes me so happy. The only problem is the bottle. It's very difficult to spray uh, because the bottle is, it's a huge bottle and it's awkward. It's like a triangle. So there's no really good way to spray it, but I figure it out. Um, I love it though. It's a pretty bottle. I mean, don't get me wrong, the bottle is really gorgeous and for such an affordable perfume, this perfume, I think you can find it for less than, like less than $14. I wanna say you can get it for around $12 on FragranceNet. Uh, but anyways, that is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey, such a good one. I've got so many samples on my desk that I have to test. I've just got so many fragrances to test. It's crazy. Okay, next I wore my Hypnotic Poison Eau de Parfum fragrance. Um, I love this. I wore this on one of the cooler days. Um, this is so beautiful. It smells like, it's funny because I didn't think that this one had almond in it the way that the EDT does, but it does have, it does have almond in it. Um, it's got a really, really similar note breakdown, in fact, to the EDT. But this one smells a little bit more floral. It's not quite as powdery as the EDT. Um, and this one dries down as a little bit more of like a sweet floral. I do get the, I do get kind of the same scent profile as the EDT. But again, just not quite as powdery, but I don't get that aspect as much as I do with the EDT. I love it. I think it's worth having both in your collection if you're a hypnotic poison lover. Um, I definitely think it's worth having both. As far as the modern versions of these, I do prefer the EDP over the modern EDT. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of the modern EDT, but I do love this one. I love this bottle. I love how dark and yeah, I just love how dark this bottle is. It's so, so pretty. I'm just so happy to have this in my collection uh, after so many years of wanting it. So anyways, that is Dior Hypnotic Poison Eau de Parfum. Uh, this one, it doesn't perform super, super well. I think I got maybe three to four hours out of it before I would feel like I would want to reapply. Now, mind you though, it was a little bit warm out that day, so I need to put this away until um, it really, really cools down and then I'll pull this back out and retest it in cold weather and I bet it's going to perform better in cold weather. So anyways, again, uh, Dior Hypnotic Poison ED EDP formulation. Okay, I wore a couple from Dior. Uh, the first one I wore is Chantilly Vanilla. This is, oh my gosh, I can't remember. I just talked about this. I just put the notes and put everything on the screen for you and I still can't remember what this is a dupe for. This is a dupe for a, um, for a niche fragrance though. 
This is so yummy. This is like a yummy, creamy, buttery vanilla. It's really, really beautiful. Nothing groundbreaking. Um, it's just a yummy vanilla. I think this has got some brown sugar in it too, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's so good, so good. Uh, lasts a really long time too for a vanilla fragrance. I think I got like six or seven hours out of this. It lasted a pretty darn long time and I didn't even layer it over lotion or anything. It was just by itself, so um, it's super yummy. I'm not gonna talk about this for a, a long time because I just talked about this in my Milky and Lactonic uh, video, which is why I couldn't put it away until I wore it. So anyways, that one is Chantilly Vanilla from Dua. I love it. And then I also pulled out my Vanille de Madagascar from Dua. Um, I love this one. This is a completely different kind of vanilla. This is a, it's still what I would consider a kind of simple vanilla, but this is more, this is much lighter. It's not buttery. It's not super creamy. This is more of like a light kind of perfumey vanilla, if that makes sense. This is a really, really like classy, grown up smelling vanilla without having any kind of a mustiness to it or a muskiness, without having any spices in it, without any of that. It's still just a pretty straightforward vanilla, but it's a little bit more grown up smelling because it's more of like a perfumey vanilla. I don't know if I'm even explaining that right, but I love it. It's This is one of my favorite vanillas in my collection. This is a dupe of the Farmazia. Annunziata Vanilla del Madagascar, I believe, um, which is discontinued or it's been reformulated. I love this. It's really, really stunning. So anyways, that is Vanille de Madagascar from Dua. Next, I wore my CJ Sense Pumpkins Night Out. This is a great, great transition one. Now, do not get me wrong. I will wear any of the three pumpkin scents that I have from CJ Sense pretty much any time of the year um, because I'm kind of obsessed with them. This one though, I would say is a really good one if you are just dying to pull out a pumpkin fragrance, but it's still kind of warm where you are, like it is here. Um, this is a perfect one. This has a brightness to it that keeps it from being super, super heavy, but it is still a very like cozy fall smelling pumpkin. This has got some kind of a booze in it. I don't remember what kind of a booze it is, but it's got a booze in it. Um, this is just, I don't know, it's just like a lighter, yeah, it's a, it's a pumpkin scent. It's definitely a fall pumpkin scent, but it's a little bit lighter um, and warm weather appropriate. And I love this. I went to town with it and I think I got a good probably seven or eight hours out of it. It lasted forever, got me through my entire day pretty much, and I love it. I love all of the CJ Scents uh, fragrances that I've smelled. They're, they're all so good. This is such a good little indie house. This would be one of my, I would say this is one of my top three um, indie houses, for sure. So anyways, that is Pumpkin's Night Out from CJ Scents, so good. Okay, next, I was really, really craving patchouli because um, I was out and about the other day, I think I was at Walmart, and I walked by a girl and she was wearing just straight patchouli oil. It made me want to wear a straight patchouli too because I just wanted to smell like that. Um, it just like immediately made me want to smell like patchouli. So I pulled out my Reminiscence patchouli and I am sick to have to say this, but I think that this is one that when my skin, when my skin chemistry changed, um, this doesn't smell good on me anymore. I've worn it twice. Now I'm going to give it one more chance this fall. And if it still doesn't smell good on me, like when it gets actually really, really cold outside, if it doesn't smell good on me in really cold weather, I'm going to end up having to declutter it, which makes me sick because this is one of my favorite patchouli scents of all time but it is just not smelling good on me anymore. It's pulling very, very sweet on me. And it almost doesn't even smell like patchouli on my skin anymore, which makes me so sad because I was like, yes, I love my Reminiscence patchouli. is like perfect. It is the most beautiful patchouli. Um, 
Oh my gosh, but yeah, it's almost not even smelling like patchouli on me anymore. It's, it just, it's pulling so, so sweet on my skin that I don't even know like what to do about it. So anyways, I have a, I think it's from a brand called Terra Nova. Um, I have a actual little patchouli oil from Terra Nova and that is the perfect patchouli oil. So I'm gonna pull that out in the next couple days and wear that. In fact, I should have put that on with this to try to tame some of the sweetness in this. Um, but I don't know, I'm gonna pull out my Terra Nova patchouli oil and we will see. Um, if all else fails, I'll just put patchouli essential oil on. Um, that and I'm gonna try my Dreamhouse Securio patchouli too because that one doesn't have really any sweetness to it so I think that one will do the job as well. But yeah, this one and it didn't perform for very long. Like this, I used to use, I used to be able to get like 10, 12 hours out of this fragrance, not anymore. Um, I think I got maybe like five hours out of it, which again is not bad, but it just didn't, it just didn't last a very long time on me. Um, yeah, I'm so sad because when I first got this fragrance, it was perfection. It was just everything that I wanted in a patchouli fragrance. And my stupid skin chemistry change has just really wrecked some perfumes for me and like i'm still finding them all the time because i don't know until i go through and wear something that i haven't worn in a long time and then it dries down and it's just like wow this is not how this usually smells on me and that was how this one was it was so sad so anyways, that is Reminiscence Patchouli. We're gonna keep her around for a little while longer. I'm gonna wait until fall. I'm gonna test it in, or I'm gonna wait until cold weather. I'm gonna test it one more time in really cold weather. And keep my fingers crossed that it doesn't pull super, super sweet on me in cold weather. I'm just hoping that it was, I'm just hoping that it's been a fluke and then maybe the last couple times I've worn it, it's been too warm. Um, that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, next I wore my Dreamhouse Securio Strawberry Love Pop. I adore this. this. It was the second time I had worn this, and I love this. This is the most beautiful, kind of like musky, slightly incense strawberry scent. I've never smelled anything quite like this. I say that every time I talk about a Dreamhouse scent because they're so unique. I really, really have never smelled anything quite like this. I've never smelled a strawberry fragrance like this. It is so, so good. If you want a strawberry fragrance that's like a really grown woman smelling strawberry that kind of and do not get me wrong, the strawberry stays throughout the entire wear time. You can always smell the strawberry. It doesn't like, it's not one of those perfumes where you can smell the strawberry when you first spray it and then in the deep dry down, you know, you get something totally different. Not at all. This, the strawberry stays with you the entire wear time. Um, but then in the deep dry down, you get this kind of like musky, incense -y strawberry, but the incense is very, very light. Um, it's, it's so beautiful. I just don't even know, like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to explain how incredible this is, but just like every single one of his perfumes and it smells, it's, it's like these fragrances are made for my skin chemistry because they all smell so good on me. Like, it's like they're made for me. Um, I don't know. I love it. I'm obsessed with this. I will be wearing this all winter. Um, I love strawberry fragrances and I, I feel like I just don't have enough strawberry fragrances in my collection. So I'm so happy to have another one. So anyways, that is Strawberry Love Pop from Dreamhouse Securio. And then last but not least, I wore my Mon Guerlain Eau Floral. Not Eau Floral. It's just Mon Guerlain Floral. I don't know why I do that. I love this. This is one of my favorite versions. This is probably my favorite version of Mon Guerlain. Um, it's so beautiful. This one is, it's Mon Guerlain. It's the Mon Guerlain scent profile, but it's a little bit lighter on the lavender-ish and a little bit sweeter. It's almost like I think it's just got more vanilla in it or something. I think it does have some kind of a flower in it, but yeah, it's Mon Guerlain, but it's just a little bit sweeter and maybe just a touch creamy. 
yeah, like a touch creamy, a little bit sweeter, but still the Mon Guerlain scent profile. It's so beautiful. It's very, very long lasting. Um, I have really good luck with Mon Guerlain in general. These fragrances last forever on me. Even the rose one that doesn't really smell like Mon Guerlain at all, um, even that one lasts a super long time on me. I just have such good luck. Um, I think Guerlain is, I really, I have a lot of favorite houses, but I think Guerlain might be my favorite like perfume house. Um, as far as like designer perfumes go because their fragrances it's another it's another situation where it's their fragrances smell so good on me it's like they were made for me they just mesh so well with my skin chemistry and this is before my chemistry changed and after um and the same with dream house i have had i have noticed zero change with how my dream house scents smell on me from before and after my skin chemistry changed. There are just certain houses that I've not had any problem with and Guerlain is one of them. Um, I just love it. I love it. I love this one. I think last time I talked about this, I was able to find a link. They may still have it on FragranceNet, but I do know that this formulation is getting harder to find. If you can believe it, I found this on clearance at Ulta for $25. Um, I still cannot believe it that I found it for that price on Ulta of all, at Ulta of all places. But anyways, that is Mon Guerlain Floral. And that is gonna be it, guys. Those are all of the fragrances that I wore last week. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.